Hello and thank you for stopping by. Today our spotlight is on the 2017 Geekway to the West convention, uh, board gaming convention that just wrapped up this past weekend in the St. Louis area. Now, Geekway is a four-day board gaming convention. The primary focus of the convention is on open gaming but they have a lot of other things that are going on and we'll talk about those in a little bit. So on this spotlight I just kind of want to go over how my weekend went, uh, what I thought of Geekway. This was my third time and uh, just let you know what maybe you could look forward to if you were to attend in the future. So like I said, Geekway is a board gaming convention uh, in the St. Louis area and specifically uh, this year it was in St. Charles at the St. Charles Convention Center. It runs for four days and I believe this was the 13th year uh, and this convention had started in someone's basement over 13 years ago and has grown to over 2100 uh, people that that came to it over this past week. So with the convention being at uh, the St. Charles Convention Center this year you know I was a little nervous about uh, what the new facility would be like, uh, how well they would do, and I have to say it was an amazing experience. Uh, this location um, was very roomy. There was a very large main hall for gaming, and then uh, there were room outside the main hall, uh, down hallways, there were separate rooms for gaming, they even had a more private uh, spot in the hotel uh, on the third floor that you could game as well. There was no lack of room for gaming, which was great. The sound system worked very well. Uh, you were able to hear the announcements no matter where you were in the convention center. You know, if you were on the outer rooms, if you were in the restroom, you were able to hear the announcements. And that wasn't always the case in years past. So that was certainly an improvement. I would say that uh, some of the announcements were what maybe went on a little longer uh, and for the most part it probably wouldn't be that you know big of a deal but if you were outside the main gaming hall those announcements were booming and it became quite disruptive uh, but like I said on the positive side you were able to hear them you weren't going to miss anything so uh, I, th I thought the communication was really well. We had a vendor hall that was attached to the main gaming area now. And I thought that was a great idea. In fact, many of the different rooms that they had, whether it was their gaming library or a play and win library or the main hall, uh, the vendor hall, all of these locations were really conveniently located next to each other, which was great. I think the gamers, I know I appreciated having that vendor hall kind of close, and I'm sure the vendors loved it as well, to be able to have all that extra foot traffic coming off of that main gaming area. And that main gaming area, they had set up uh, a grid, so along, you know, one of the walls, like the north and south walls, they had letters. And then on each of the tables, they had uh, numbers. So it created a grid so that if you needed to locate someone who was in the hall or tell someone where you were sitting, you could just give them your coordinates. Hey, I'm sitting at J10. Very smart and very helpful. Uh, I know I used that several times over the weekend to locate people. Now, if I had one knock on the facility itself was that the cell reception inside was terrible. And uh, if you didn't have Wi-Fi and you were in the main gaming area, good luck. I mean, it, it, it really was a struggle. So I know Geekway, there isn't really much that they could do about that, and that's not their fault. It's just, you know, it, it is just what it is. So uh, as far as the hotel, and again, Geekway really doesn't have anything to do with the hotel, but um, we really enjoyed it. We loved our room. It was very nice and the staff was super friendly there. Yeah, it was a little more expensive than it was last year, but I think it was worth it for how nice it was and the convenience, again, of being able to, you know, just 
go down from your room, you know, go into the convention hall, you're there and ready to go. And there were plenty of hotels around the convention center as well that you could stay at, um, which made it convenient for those traveling uh, from further outside the St. Louis area. So what were some of the experiences that I had over this four days? Well, first of all, uh, we got in on Wednesday night, the day before uh, Geekway actually started. And, you know, we, we it was kind of nice to be able to do that, be able to get unpacked and uh, just be ready to go Thursday morning when it opened. So what we ended up doing is we ended up going down to the lobby area, the little dining area for dinner. It was great to see all these board gamers who had come in early, setting up games, playing, having dinner, and just having a really good time, kind of on an unofficial day one of Geekway. We had a gentleman come up to our table uh, by the name of Jay Little. And I didn't know this at the time, but as he was talking, he, he had mentioned that Geekway had started in his basement 13 years ago. And just what a great uh, joy it, w it was for him to see it to gr uh, you know grow as it has. And he doesn't live in the St. Louis area anymore, but um, and we got to talk with Jay for, I don't know, an hour, hour and a half or so. And it was fascinating talking to him. Uh, he knew so much about board game design. He's worked on different uh, types of board games as well. And just to, to hear his passion as he talked uh, for board gaming was, was kind of infectious. It had a great time. Couldn't have been a nicer gentleman. Um, and uh, to have him sit down with us uh, was such a treat. Now on Thursday morning, that's when it actually opens up, and you go and get your, your tickets, your, or your badge, I should say, and then once you get your badge, uh, you're able to uh, get in line, you get a free game, but this year, not only did everybody get a, a free game where you would draw out of a bag and, and get a game, uh, they were also giving away two bonus games on top of that, and also a custom uh, Geekway die, which just really nice touch. Now this year, the uh, the badges that you wore were a little different. They were larger, but they were a little thinner than what they had used in the past. It was great to have the larger badge because, first of all, the name was larger. So, you know, if you're meeting gamers or other people for the first time to play games, it was nice to be able to see their names clearly on the badge. And on the back of the badge had, uh, you know, times for, you know, library, play and win, just different things that were going on over the weekend. So they could shove a lot of information, just stuff it onto that, the back of that badge. The only downside is that the little tab where you would connect the badge to the lanyard. I saw a number of people who had had that broken off and had to end up taping it so that it would stay on the lanyard. But uh, I... Like I said, I, I like the size. I wish it would have been maybe a little sturdier on that. Additionally, the badge is double for, you know, it has a barcode on it. So if you go to this play and win room, which we'll talk about in a second, or the, check out a game at the library, you know, you can just scan it, scan the game, and you're ready to go. Very slick how they have all that set up. Now, like I said, they have a play and win room and they have a library. The Play and Win is such a great event that they have where you can go in and, you know, check out a game, play it, and then you're given a little card, you fill out the names that played the game and give it a ranking, and then you take the game back to the library, check it in, put the card into a slot, then maybe check out another game and do the same thing and then put another card in a slot. You do this throughout the weekend and then on Sunday, they take all of the names for all the different games and there were a ton of games um, that, that you could check out from the play and win library and then they use some fancy schmancy math algorithm or something i'm not quite sure what they do to uh decide who's going to win but uh they they draw names and you get to go home with that game it's such a great event. Now, last year, my wife and I struck out. This year, 
each of us won a game. So we were really excited about that. And then the library has over a thousand games. I can't remember. I want to say it's over 1500 games. It's enormous. You can find all types of games there. And again, you just go in, check them out, play them, return them, check them out, check another one out. Just, there's no lack of games for you to find. You would definitely find something that you like uh, from the library or the play and win or both. I also got to participate in a math trade. Now, the math trade isn't sponsored by Geekway. Uh, somebody hosts it and uh, Geekway allows uh, the transaction to take place there. But basically this math trade takes place on Board Game Geek and you're able to list games that you want to trade and then look at what other people are wanting to trade and make a want list from that. And then again, fancy schmancy math, you end up meeting, uh, you know, finding out uh, maybe I'm going to give game A to this person and then I'm going to get this game from this person over here. And uh, it's such a great way to get new games. I was able to trade away five games and I got five new games. So just a win-win for everybody. And uh, it's great that Geekway allows that math trade to take place there. Now, in addition to the free games, every night they also draw for for door prizes. They have door prizes for people who volunteer, and then they have door prizes for everyone, all of the different gamers. And they give away quite a few games during the door prizes. Not only that, um, they're, they're really nice games that, uh, that you can win in the, in the door prize. Um, this is my third year. It's our third year going. Haven't won a door prize yet. This year I did win one. I won El Grande Big Box. Never heard of it. I've watched some reviews. Looks like a fantastic game and from uh, reactions I got from other people, apparently it's a, it's a very nice one. So thank you Geekway for that. You know what I'm talking about. Geekway also has all kinds of other events and I'm probably going to miss some of them, but you know, they do a, a design contest. They do battling tops, which I've never participated in it, but I have gone into the room to watch it, and it is crazy fun that they have putting on this Battling Tops tournament. They have a fancy gaming night where you can dress up, go to a special room, and, and play games. Uh, it's a very unique uh, event that they have. Uh, in addition to that, they do tournaments throughout the, the weekend. Um, there's a, a company called Double Exposure, uh, Envoy, and they put on these tournaments and uh, they will teach you how to play the games Then you can, uh, you know, play in these tournaments. Very friendly people who, who run this program. They do a fantastic job. If you get to the final table of, of a tournament, you usually win a copy of the game. And if you're the winner, then you get a trophy and usually a ticket to go to uh, a regional at another convention to participate there. So uh, a great program that they put on. Um, like I said, I might be forgetting some of the other events that they have there, but there's there's a lot of, of other stuff going on besides just the open gaming. Now, like I said earlier, there were at least 20 different vendors there. Some some great names in the industry were there. You know, you had Smirk and Dagger Games, Gray Fox Games, Yellow, uh, Stronghold Games was there, uh, and, and so many other great um, publishers as well. And uh, I had the opportunity to meet uh, Kurt Covert of Smirk and Dagger and also talk to Stephen Bonacore of Stronghold Games. These gentlemen couldn't have been nicer guys. You could tell they were very passionate, passionate about the games that they had, passionate about the board gaming industry, and seemed genuinely excited to be at Geekway to the West. Now, I think I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the Geekway team themselves and the volunteers. They go through a ton of work to put this event on, and they really do such an amazing job. You can tell how much they really enjoy what they do. They are friendly, and they are fun. They try to make sure that you are having a good time over the weekend, and I appreciate that so much. 
So now I want to uh, go over uh, my favorite games, my five favorite games that I played over this weekend. Now, I played over 22 games that I've never played before. No way. I've played more than 22 games in those four days, but 22... Uh, new ones to me. So this list is my favorite out of those. This isn't necessarily my favorites of all time, although I'm, some of them might, could be on there. I've just never compiled a, uh, a favorites list. But uh, these are my five favorite games from over the weekend. Number five was Champions of Midgard. This is a game I'd heard a lot about, but I've never played. It is a worker placement game and you are going to be trying to gather some resources such as, you know, wood or food and also um, your, your warriors and then building ships and going. There are so many different places you can go on this map. There are a lot of different options for you to do. You can fight some trolls or some monsters, gain victory points. Uh, I just really enjoy Champions of Midgard. My fourth favorite game that we played this weekend was Dead Last. Dead Last is by Smirk and Dagger Games, and my wife and I were talking to Kurt Covert, and he was showing us some of the different games, and he pointed us out into this direction, and and Dead Last is kind of a survivor-style party game because everyone's going to have a color, and then all of the players are going to have a deck of cards with the colors that represent all the people around the table, and then overtly, covertly, really there aren't any rules. You are going to try and get all the different people to try and vote for somebody to vote them out of the game. <laughs> I know that sounds terrible, right? But it was hilarious. We had such a great time with this. Um, you know, you, you really could just, you could text someone, you could email them, you could get up and talk to them, you, you know. There was a lot of different ways. A lot of times it was just flash the card real quick, maybe making sure that the person wasn't looking. And after a minute or two, everybody would vote who they wanted to vote out. And the person who had the most votes was out of the game, you know, for that round. However, if that person suspected that they were getting voted out, they could play their ambush card and stop them from getting voted out and get to turn the tables on those who did vote for them by ki kicking one of them out of the game. Such a blast we had with this game. I think it was probably the favorite party game for the group. We played with a group of 11. Um, like I said, had a blast. Certainly was my favorite uh, party game that we pay played. My number three game was a Game of Thrones, the board game by Fantasy Flight Games. Wow, this game was completely immersive. Uh, I love the Game of Thrones, uh, Game of Thrones. So this was kind of natural to uh, want to play this as well. Um, it's an area control game, but what makes the game shine is the diplomacy that you have to use to be able to try and pick up alliances. You know. People, you know, getting up from the table, going and trying to make little alliances or talk strategy, even though each player is individually trying to get to seven castles claimed uh, or have the most castles at the end of 10 rounds. It was great to see. It was a lot of fun to get up and go around trying to make deals, wondering if that person's going to backstab you, which happened often, um, trying to see if, how long your alliance can hold. If it, even if it can hold for one round. And there isn't a lot of luck in this game because you either have the strength to defeat the other army or you don't. Um, there are some cards that you have that uh, can increase the strength or give you special powers, but other than that, there really isn't any luck to it. It's really all about diplomacy and being, making sure you're building up your, your army and or defenses to uh, you know, take on the other households. Uh, so just had a great time with that. It took over six hours to teach and play, but uh, it, it was really, it went by very quickly. My second favorite game came out of nowhere for me, and that was Cold Water Crown by Bellwether Games. This is not a game I was expecting to be on my list. In fact, I 
hate to admit it, I had not heard of this game until Geekway, and until somebody in our group had said, hey, have you played this game? you really got to play it. It's great. Well, Bella, or I'm sorry, um, uh, Cold Water Crown is a fishing-themed game. But you don't have to be a fisherman to enjoy this game. It has such a unique mechanic as far as your worker placement. It's kind of a, a disc or like a spool or a disc that you are placing so that you can maybe fish an area or do other different um, uh, fishing related items. And then at the end of your turn, you're grabbing from another location and doing that action as well. It was, it, like I said, a very unique mechanism to the game uh, the, with the way that the baits worked but you know what impressed me is that the mechanics did work incredibly well but the game board everything about it was beautiful the board the components just a beautiful game but it was a lot of fun and whether you're a fisherman or not uh, I think this would be a, a fantastic game for me it was my second favorite game and my favorite game that I played over this weekend was Orleans. Again, this was another game that I had heard a lot about, uh, but had never taken a, a, a moment to play it. This game, which is by Tasty Minstrel Games, is a worker placement game, but there are so many different options for you to choose on your turn. Um, building up your, your workforce, you have a board where you where you can work just on that and get different perks throughout the game. Then there's another board where you are traveling through. I believe it's Orleans. No way. Um, and being able to collect goods, build guilds while you're out there, and then there are other boards that you can use to place your workers on. There are a ton of things that you can do, which makes this game very interesting and to me it seems very replay replayable so um i had a blast with it and that was my favorite game uh, from this past weekend so that's it that's the spotlight for the 2017 geekway to the west fantastic job that they had done i am looking forward to next year and seeing what they do uh, if you didn't get to go this past weekend uh, make it a point to uh, uh, to try and get a ticket next year they do sell out fast. It is amazing uh, how well attended and how well received it is. And I guess it's really not surprising though because of how good a job that they do. So if you enjoyed this spotlight, uh, I ask that you take a moment and hit the subscribe or the like button below and check out some of our uh, other great videos. We do a lot of videos on reviews. So uh, check us out and once again, thank you for stopping by. <laughs>